Welcome to Lex's World, everybody, and today we're doing an episode on par value and par range and what kind of par do you need for your plants at every single stage of their life. I've already done an episode on Lux in the past, and I will link to it down in the video description, but I figured I'd have to do uh, the complete set and talk about par because a lot of you guys just don't use Lux nowadays. As well, LED light manufacturers seem to greatly prefer showing off their lights capabilities by displaying their par readings at certain heights uh, as you guys can see uh, in this example image right here. So it seems that Lux is simply slowly going out of fashion at least for indoor growers. PAR stands for Photosynthetically Active Radiation. It's a plant-specific way of measuring only the light that your plants can actually utilize for photosynthesis. Whereas lumens, usually expressed over a certain surface area in lux, are just a more general measure of overall light intensity, not factoring in for what is photosynthetically relevant. This makes PAR a far more precise form of light measurement for indoor gardeners out there. The reason lumens and lux are still so widely used is, uh, well, basically because a lux meter costs about one-tenth of what a par meter costs, so a lot of growers simply make do with lux, especially uh, if you're an outdoor grower the sun gives off good par, so you really don't have to worry about it. But either way, I'll link to both a par meter and a lux meter down in the video description for you guys if you want to take a look at them. Now, PPFD, or Photosynthetic Photon Flux Density, is simply a way of expressing PAR. This is the unit that it measures in. It's actually micromoles per square meter per second. PPFD is simply the number that PAR meters display their readouts in. So here are the PPFD values that you want to aim for during your grow, though God knows you can get away with far lower values. It'll simply mean slower growth, less yield, and so on. So for your seedlings, clones, mother plants, you're going to want 250 to 400 PPFD. For your vegetative phase plants, you're going to want 400 to 600 PPFD. And for your flowering stage plants, you're going to want 6 to 900 PPFD. But again, for you casual growers, don't worry if you're under 600 PPFD. You're still going to get growth. You're still going to get yield. It just won't be as fast or as much. Now, some of you indoor growers always wonder, what if I go higher, like above 1,000 PPFD? Well, you can go higher. For example, we have some interesting research in 2008 out of the University of Mississippi that demonstrates that a sativa-dominant plant originating in Mexico, so a strain that can handle its light intensity, actually grows spectacularly at 1500 PPFD, provided that the air temperature stays below 30 Celsius. But catch! The higher you go above 1000 PPFD, the less you're getting for every point of increase, and the harder it is to increase. The only way to get yourself more par is either with more grow lights, better grow lights, or bringing your existing grow lights closer down to your plants, which of course can cause heat stress. In fact, the first method of more grow lights can also cause you heat stress. And remember, as an indoor grower, your role is typically to grow the most efficient plants you can for the buck, not to grow plants in the fastest way where you're spending the most money and the most on electricity. A good rule of thumb is if you're going above 950 to 1000 PPFD, odds are that you're not being economically efficient, and that's even if you're using highly efficient LED lights. By the way, I don't know why the University of Mississippi does so much good research on cannabis. They were even the ones who did the potency monitoring project for decades. Uh, maybe I gotta interview somebody from over there, because I'm really wondering why, in a state that's so regressive historically about cannabis, you have this one university that does all this fantastic research on it. 
Anyway, that's my quick tutorial on PAR. Hope you guys found it useful and a big special thanks to those of you who followed me off of YouTube recently. I really appreciate it and those of you who follow me on more open platforms, you guys are always going to get all of my content, not just some of it, and even the really fundamental episodes like this one that may get uploaded to YouTube eventually, you guys are going to see way before anybody else. Meanwhile, punishing YouTube like this has had real consequences for me in terms of views and in terms of uh, revenue. So for those of you who want to support me a little more, uh, but you hate Amazon and you hate Patreon, I've actually added more options like direct PayPal, Bitcoin, and even Litecoin. So I'll link to those down in the description, and if you utilize those, I am greatly appreciative. On that note, guys, subscribe, hit that like button if you found this useful and we'll see you all next time.